Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Storm Collectible Street Fighter V Arcade Edition a Deadly Precision Cami in her battle costume. I wish it was regular Cami. I wonder if everyone else does too. Let me know in the comment section below, do you like this Cami or do you like the classic green spandex Cami? I know this is like popular for Street Fighter V, but if you had your choice, would you want this Cami or would you want the green and red? Let me know in the comment section below. This figure is interesting. We're gonna be talking about action figure butt at some point and boobs, believe it or not. And it's gonna get all kinds of awkward. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This figure stands just about six and a half inches, which makes it pretty close to 16 and a half centimeters. And just so you have an idea of how tall it is up against some other lines of figures, it's about the same exact height as a DCSH Batman, so a little bit out of scale there. And it is just slightly shorter than a Marvel Legends Gambit. Close enough to scale there where it could be mixed in, but that will make her small up against some of the other Storm figures. Scale is just out the window at this point. As far as the stacks go on this figure, she has really broad shoulders and really big legs. And it's... I get why they did that with the legs, but they seem even a bit bigger than they probably should be. And she has really giant feet, but the finish on this figure is not bad. We have mostly like a matte finish everywhere except for her armor and boots. And it looks pretty good, I guess. The paint job for the marks on her body, I guess, are pretty well done. The line work is pretty clean throughout. The dark blue on the light blue and then up against the skin, it's okay. Uh, a little bit of details throughout on the boots and, and armor and whatnot. Looks all right otherwise, so that's, that's pretty good. We have some ugly elbows. We'll get to that in the articulation section, but otherwise it, it looks all right. I'll give it a seven out of 10 for the aesthetic. Really broad shoulders make it look kind of weird. If her shoulders were in just a little bit more, it would look a lot better because they are broad as heck. Heckin' broad shoulders. All right, as far as accessories go, that's where this figure really shines. We have three different faces. We have a neutral face, a neutral face looking off to the side, and then a yelling face. We have three pieces of front hair, which as far as at least my figure, you guys can let me know if yours is any different. Mine are all the same. I don't know if they're just like spares or what, but mine did not come with one on the actual figure, and I had three in there that were in the tray that all looked to be the same. I don't know, let me know if yours is any different. For hands, we have two fist hands. We have two different sets of style pose hands and then another set which is karate chop style pose hand. And then we have the energy effects. One is just like a more basic one that her foot can tuck into. And I say basic, but it's bigger than the whole figure. And it's very cool looking. I like it a whole bunch, that's very nice. And then we have one that's a three-parter which is just gigantic. It's even more bigger than the figure. Uh, only problem is it didn't fit in the package. Like it wasn't in the package properly. And so we got a big smush tip on part of it, which isn't like a huge deal. I can probably heat it and get it fixed, but if you're gonna make accessories, you should make sure they fit in the package. So that's a little bit of an issue, but both of those are awesome and huge, difficult to pose with, but still really good. And then lastly, we have some hair. I don't know why I did it in this order, but who cares? We have the one neutral hair that's just kind of hanging down, that's on her in the package. Then we have one that hangs down and blows back. And then we have one that is windswept off to the side. And they're all good enough. It's not great, but they fit on well enough and that is okay. So accessory wise, uh, without a flight stand, it's gonna be hard to use some of the, some of, not some of the effect parts. So that's definitely a problem, but otherwise it's decent accessories. I'll give it an eight, that's pretty cool. Uh, I would give it a nine or a 10, but since you need a stand and you have to buy that separately, that is definitely a downside for the effect parts. Okay, for the articulation, the head is on a ball peg, which goes down into the body, so it's technically a double ball peg. However, on this figure, I can't get the bottom, like the peg itself to move. It's just the head moving around on it. So it does rotate, it does lean a little bit, um, but I can't really do any forward and back at all. And that's about it. For the shoulders, we have a ball peg that goes into the torso, which lets the entire arm move around, but it's very stiff, it doesn't really do a whole lot. I'm mostly just getting side to side, doesn't really wanna go up or down. So unless they change the en engineering and I can't get in there to see, uh, that's how that works. You do have full rotation on the arm, and that's fine. Uh, the hinge itself goes up better than horizontal, so that's pretty good. You do have your bicep swivel, which is fine. You have a double jointed elbow, which gives decent range. 
It's not better than 90, but with the big old glove on there, I guess that's okay. The problem I have with the elbow is that it is really too big. The joint itself is like as big, if not bigger than the bicep. So you get a really lumpy looking arm. That is very strange. It's functional. This one works better than the other side, but uh, it's functional, but it's still just kind of weird, kind of weird looking. And then for the wrist, you have a ball hinge, standard ball hinge. For the torso, you have a, a double ball peg that lets the upper torso move around on top of the lower torso, and you get really good range out of that. That's very nicely done. And then the lower torso, you can just see right in there, is just another big ball peg. So this whole part moves around on top of that ball peg. And as you can see, we have a floating belt, but this is where we have a problem with this figure. They just sculpted the thong part of her speedo thing. And normally that's okay, but there's a lot of gapping in the front and that's a problem because as you can see, it's just gapping all over the place. It's very weird. You can kind of hide it, but if you hide it in the front, it's not good in the back. And so, we're learning with this that even if you sculpt some huge gams, some big old cakes on your figure, you still need to sculpt a little bit of ass cheek on the crotch part as well. If you just sculpt the thong part, it only works very barely at certain angles from certain perspectives. Otherwise, it's not going to look good. So like right there, it looks kind of like her ass is eating her clothes, but it looks kind of reasonable but then you have gapping all over the place in the front and there's just not enough meat there to hide that articulation. And it's a very soft plastic, so they could have definitely done some more. It wouldn't have affected range, but like right there, if you look close enough, you can see what she ate for lunch. Like that's not good. That's not gonna be okay. You need to have a little bit of ass cheek on the crotch piece. You have to, otherwise you end up with huge gaps. And I'm doing my best to not say anything inappropriate or make jokes that I shouldn't make. But you do have ball pegs here which do give decent range. And obviously they can rotate around and move and you can basically do whatever you want with them. But holy crap, that is not good. Like you don't want those kind of gaps. And you can hide them from one angle at a time. So like if you're gonna have it just in your shelf like this, if you wanted to, like I don't know why you'd pose it like that, but if you wanted to, you can, and it's not going to be awful. You can hide that, get the belt back in there, and it'll be okay. But if you look from behind, it is not okay. So, very odd design choice here. I don't know what they were really thinking, but those gaps are not good. So that's the butt part out of the way. Let's go ahead and talk about the tatas. They are very squishy. And that's a good thing, not just because perverts are going to want to go like that and squish them, but because when you move the arms, it actually does squish the boobs in a relatively natural way, and it will allow the arms to move a little bit more. And so I don't know if they did that on purpose, or if it's just a coincidence, or it's just the shape of the plastic, but when you squish the boobs from the sides, they actually squish like boobs. And I'm just going to do this for a minute, bump up those views. Just kidding. I mean, I'm not, I did it, but it was just for a joke. All right, on to the legs, the rest of the legs. Double jointed knee, just a little bit better than 90 degrees. And then for the ankle, let's see what kind of range we get. Uh, pretty good, going back. Her feet are huge, by the way. And going forward, not great, but enough. And then do we get, yeah, we get a relatively decent, actually, swivel out of that. So, it's not bad, other than the hip region, really. The rest of the figure is fine. There are definitely some oddities about the figure, but I think really the biggest problem is just the hips. <sighs> it, it definitely looks weird. So articulation wise, I will give it, those hips are really a problem, but I'll give it a six. Those hips are a really big problem. Having those big gaps, kind of ugly elbows, not a great situation, honestly. I really like what they did with the diaphragm joint. It works well, but, those hips, man. Those hips. They don't lie, and they are telling me that this figure deserves an overall score of only 6 out of 10 because of the hips and the ass cheeks. Well, actually, the ass cheeks are fine, but the ass crack is the problem. And so, too many problems for this figure. Some poses are going to look fine. Other poses are not. I don't know. It's just very, very strange. So you guys can let me know what you think in the comment section below, but there you go. You got my 
You got my two cents. So do with that what you will. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you aren't subscribed, you should because I have new videos up just about every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.